Cameron here, and today I want to talk about what I ultimately project, or what I ultimately think, the Baylor Bears defense is going to look like in 2020 under new head coach Dave Aranda. Now, in order to get an understanding of exactly what I'm talking about, we have to go over three high, three down. And I think the easiest starting point for that particular discussion is starting with the tight front. Even though it is not one of the more common ways to run three high safety, three down, um, I think it's the easiest starting point conceptually. Okay. First thing you have to understand about the tight front is that it is essentially a inside zone directed front. It's basically built to be able to take on and uh, stop inside zone and to a certain extent outside zone. Most spread offenses are predicated on zone and in particular attacking the open B gap. Well, how does the tight front handle this? Well, it places two individuals in the B gaps in the four eye position, and then it's got a nose at the zero tackle. So if their offense is running zone, you've got the two B gaps taken care of. The nose typically will play what's known as a lag technique, and that's where uh, he's going to go to the backside A gap. This is actually a relatively easy assignment for a nose tackle because if they head straight up field and the center is moving play side, they'll just naturally end up in the backside A gap. Mike by contrast, he's going to play the front side A gap, and then that seals everything up inside, and it's going to essentially force the ball to bounce outside. These two apex players, or if you prefer, overhangs, um, they're going to stay on their respective slot receivers until the ball is declared. That is, the running back's got the ball, or quarterback's got the ball, um, uh, and he's actually committed to coming to the line of scrimmage. But for the most part, they're going to hang there until the running back gets the ball, and then they're going to, at that point, stick their foot to the ground and attack the outside C gap. In theory, this middle safety guy becomes a free hitter then. I say in theory because in practice that's not actually what happens. Um, more commonly, he's assigned as a, essentially your option player. So, for example, let's say the offense runs zone read. They're reading this guy right here. So, you got the guard and the center are going to be working to uh, take nose to Mike. This guy's going to be working his way out. Um, either to take the Sam or to potentially to the middle safety. Well, 4-I crashes down, takes away the dive, quarterback pulls. Well, now essentially if this tackle takes on this Sam here, the middle safety becomes the replace player. Or if he comes here, Sam crashes down and the free safety comes up to fill on a possible RPO there. Or flip it around, make it a bash. Okay, we're reading this guy. He's going Tackle's going out to the will or middle safety. We're working our way up to Mike. Um, now, again, he crashes down. Uh, the forward crashes down, take away the dive. Okay, if tackle hasn't taken the will, will's going to um, come up, take the exterior path. Ba boundary safety is going to come up to fill on the RPO, or if the tackle's taken out the will, it's the middle safety. So essentially, the middle safety is acting as your option player, the guy, extra guy you need. Um, when facing against a variety of different types of options. Um, so it's an easy assignment essentially for him because it's like, well, well what's the quarterback doing? And just follow the quarterback. Um, and you're, you're just going to be right every time. Uh, in terms of coverages, most common or the, tend to be the base uh, for this particular structure, particularly on a tight front, is to run Tampa 2. So you got these corners in the flats. These guys are playing in half. This guy's going to be playing essentially deep middle. These guys are going to be wall and two. And the Mike is either going to be uh, the fourth pass rusher or he's going to be uh, taking uh, running back number three. Now, tight front, while it's pretty good against zone, has a couple of issues, one of which is pass rush. These two four-eye techniques are put at a disadvantage because they have to start inside the tackle. They have to work their way outside the tackle to get contained. And then and only then can they execute their arsenal of pass rush moves, which means they're never going to be terribly quick to the pass. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll get there eventually, but it's not quick. Um, now, there's been a, a variety of different ways in which to solve that problem, essentially try to manufacture pressure, simplest of which is to have the mic uh, rush, generally have a two-way go on a guard and have the nose go opposite. It's a pretty solid way of uh, being able to generate pressure, particularly if you're able to... Uh, gather which side of the protection the offense is ultimately going to have the man side and which way they're going to have the half slot. Another way has been to run simulated pressures, such as, you know, let's say, sanding the uh, SAM off the edge. Um, 
And if there's four I can occupy the tackle and the guard, or they're too late to recognize it, and this is the man protection side, then you get one-on-one -on -one with the running back, which is actually pretty good because a lot of five-man pressure is ultimately that, that's their goal. Um, and then probably rotate into a form of cover three. They'll certainly uh, cover two uh, options have been shown as well. Uh, you can also do it with this backside rule as well, the same simulated pressure as far as that goes. But the other problem that you run into with the tight front is that um, it can struggle at times with gap schemes. Like I said earlier, it's a great front against inside zone, and to a certain extent, I think it's quite good against uh, outside zone, but against a lot of different gap schemes, you're going to run into some problems. For example, if the guard pulls, he oftentimes can really blow that four eye off the line. As anybody who's ever played a three technique and a five technique in their time, such as back in high school, can tell you that little bit of difference there, uh, the difference between being inside the tackle as opposed to being outside, makes a big difference in terms of the time you need to be able to get in a good position before the pulling guard uh, either knocks your sock off, tend to be in here, or, or you're able to get a good dent or wrong arm, depending on your preferred technique. Um, also, full box can give all sorts of different types of issues to this front. So, Iowa State comes up with a radical idea, which doesn't seem like a big change until you start trying to figure out a way to crack it. And this is their so-called back front. And essentially all they've done is they've moved one of their four eyes four eye opposite the running back to a five technique. Now, this ultimately uh, gives them a wide variety of options. The five technique a lot of the time is given what's known as a, a heavy technique or sometimes a push assignment. Essentially what that means is if he gets a base block from the tackle, he's going to work his way into the um, B gap. If he gets something else, then he's going to play as a normal five technique which can create a wide variety of problems because if you want to run zone, well, this guy's going to try to work his way back in there. Now we got the same problem we did with the tight front. Well, now we want to be able to run certain types of gap schemes. Well, now we got this five technique sitting out there, well prepared to be able to take on, let's say, for example, a pulling guard. We don't have a lot of full block options over there. Um, in addition, uh, this also provides a, a wide variety of uh, coverage options to go along with it. So now we've got five technique, he's no longer inside the tackle, so he's going to be in a better position to rush. But now um, we can squeeze things down, not only just with the tamp two, but we can also play like, for example, an invert cover three. So he's going to play deep middle, deep third, deep third, curl flat, curl flat. These guys are now able to squeeze down um, in the respective spots, and now it's going to be much more difficult for them to run. And you can mix and match those different elements as well, such as, for example, maybe you don't want to play that one in particular, but maybe you want to play a form of uh, cover three roll um, or three cloud. So corner's going to play flat. We're going to have this guy play over here. He's going to play deep middle. He's going to play deep third. Um, this guy can operate in and out, and we can have this guy play one of the uh, essentially uh, buzz spots uh, most people's vernacular. So that for there right there is the back front. But the second, the other one of the two most common fronts run by Iowa State is the buck front. And that's, they got two five techniques. And again, one or both of these individuals may be given that heavy technique. So if they do get zone, if they do get that base block, they're going to roll inside the B gaps. Most is commonly lagging, and you can fill all this stuff up. And the fact that this guy, for example, is... Um, uh, often playing a heavy technique uh, can cause problems with a wide variety of uh, gap schemes as well. A classic example is, let's say, for example, they want to, offense wants to run power, so base block here, we're going to try to double team work our way up. This guy's going to roll around through the B gap, hopefully take out either the first of the middle safety or the will. Um, he's probably going to be rallying down. Um, well, if this guy's first reaction on, on, on base block is to work his butt into the B gap, well, you just created a massive clog there. Um, and now the middle safety is essentially freed up to be able to rally down when the ball bounces outside and take out the running back before he's able to get much of anywhere. In addition, buck front gives you two five techniques, so that's going to be better in terms of pass rush. Um, and then, you know, well, like I keep saying, you get a wide variety of options in terms of what you want to do coverage-wise from this three high structure. For example, why don't we just take these two safeties and have them play inside and we play a form of cover three. Um, you know, let them believe that if these guys have walked out pretty far, uh, the world is um, theirs for the taking in terms of the run game, and then just start shoving out numbers into the box. Okay. Then, 
after you know those ones got deployed, then we had Gary Patterson's version, which essentially is a variation on the back front. So Gary Patterson essentially saw that, hey, this 3 s safety structure thing, there could be something to it. Um, and so when he opted to ultimately run it, he put on his own spin. Essentially, you recognize that this individual, um, you're, you're asking him to do a lot um, from that particular spot. He's going to have to fold in. He's going to have to play as a pass rusher. Um, he's going to have to take on things on the outside in terms of pulling guards, things like that. And so he ultimately opted to make that individual be an outside linebacker. Um, and this, ended up, this ultimate structure ended up working quite well. The only real difference um, from this to the, that back front is, again, we've just moved the nose from a zero to a shade. And yeah, okay, well, it was a five technique, five technique before, but now we're going to make it an outside linebacker. Now, this is the first front that I think ultimately Dave Aranda, um, uh, I think is going to be formed part of his base. The reason why is that Dave Aranda um, is a big believer in getting speed on the field. Um, at Wisconsin, uh, particularly toward the end of his tenure there, probably his most common front was the, his, his peso package, where essentially he had two defensive linemen, four outside linebackers, and five DBs. Now, mind you, he was running it from a too high structure with a nickel, but the point remains that he was trying to emphasize getting as much speed on the field as possible to um, allow him to attack the offense in as wide a variety as possible. Uh, each one of those four linebackers, for example, they could drop in coverage or they can rush a passer, um, and you don't know what ultimately is coming. Now, if Dave Aranda ultimately did that, you know, opting for two defensive linemen and four linebackers in the Big Ten, which is tend to be more of a ground and pound um, set of offenses, then what do you think his approach is going to be in the Big 12? Um, so ultimately, I think this is one of the starting points he's, he's going to be working from, and this is based in no small part that he saw the success of Baylor's three high structure in 2019, and now he's just trying to mesh those particular philosophies. And I think this would be a good starting point because you've already got uh, film, you already got tape uh, from Gary Patterson in terms of how to make this work. But there's another front that I think ultimately uh, is going to see some use as well. And I know this as a flip front. And you're going to see why in just a second. All right, so you just flipped it. Um, so one of the reasons why I think this particular front is going to uh, see significant use is that Dave Aranda likes, at least in a vacuum, he likes to have a uh, featured pass rusher. Um, I think that's pretty well documented. If he can, he wants to have that, particularly um, aligning that to the side of the running back because that tends to be the man protection side, and therefore you can run um, a lot more effective games to it. So, for example, this guy, for example, he's your featured pass rusher. He's your dude, um, and this is likely the man protection side. Well, you can have the nose work up here on a standard stunt like this, and I have the jack roll up inside um, behind him, hopefully get one-on-one -on -one with the running back. And you really didn't, you didn't really do anything, um, didn't have to send extra guys or anything else like that. But also, um, Dave Aranda being the simulated pre pressure coverage guru he is, uh, you get a wide variety of different pass um, options in that regard with this one here. So just, just as a simple example, you can, let's say, send the will on the C gap, send the mic to the A, nose is gonna wrap around, Jack's gonna drop, uh, let's say to play the rat and cover one man. All right, Jake efficient simulated pressure right there. Um, and the quarterback, even if the slides ultimately gonna be able to pick up those guys, is gonna see two linebackers coming to one side. His clock's gonna speed up. Um, and he's gonna to want to get the ball up pretty quickly. It also lends itself to a wide variety of different coverage options, but you know, that's probably true of any three high uh, safety structure um, because now, again, you can play, like, let's say, for example, that invert cover three. Okay, these guys can play curl flat. These guys can be able to squeeze down, deep middle, deep third, deep third, uh, but also being able to play um, uh, different items such as three cloud um, and being able to roll the coverage um, or being able to have this middle safety drop down, play one of the um, commonly known as buzz spots and a form of cover three. Um, you've, you've got 
a wide variety of approaches that are ultimately available to you. And that's something that Dave Aranda very, very much values. A lot of defensive coordinators will come in in the initial press conference and talk about wanting to be multiple and be attacking and things like that. But in my view, Dave Aranda is actually multiple and actually attacking. He actually lives up to all of that. And so this is just my thoughts and ultimately how he's going to be doing that. And it's in part based because Baylor's best pass rusher is a, um, or at least I think the best uh, pass rusher on their team, is a very hybrid player in Trell Bernard. And this particular jack spot here would be a wonderful opportunity to feature him. Trell Bernard didn't get as many opportunities as I would have liked uh, to rush the passer in 2019, um, but instances he did, he demonstrated himself to be very capable in that regard. Um, and the Baylor roster, uh, as you can probably see from the most recent recruiting, um, Dave Rod is getting a lot of uh, linebacker talent um, all across the board. That's one of the positions he prioritized early on. And I think it's ultimately because he's going to want a lot of these hybrid linebackers out there as part of his defense. Anyway, that's just my projection. I could be way off. I could be completely wrong. But this is ultimately what I think that Baylor is going to start as their base defense. So.